Faculty members and students of Imhotep Institute Charter High School, welcome to TEP TV. We proudly represent the freshmen. We proudly represent the sophomores. We proudly represent the juniors. Join us as we take you through the 2023-2024 school year. And as always, go What's up, Tep TV? My name is Ashley Boykin, and I'm here with... Ibrahim Shisha. And today we're going to be talking about the Roman versus Imhotep game. What do you think the score prediction is going to be? It's going to be another blowout like we did the whole season. We're going to run that score up, stay disciplined and all that. We're going to, we're going to take that jump. We're going to take that jump home. You heard him. He said he's going to take it home. So since you're going to take it home, how you feel about the post and them talking all that on the net? Like, how you feel about that? I feel like it's just another team talking trash, thinking they, thinking, thinking they hot and they thinking they good, thinking they can stand with the tech. But it's gonna be another loss, another another championship in the books for us. That's a. It's gonna be another championship in the books. So you telling me like y'all, even y'all like the coaches, they think like it's gonna be a big game. Like, do you think it's gonna be a big game or you think it's like just a regular game? Uh, I feel like like the people that's playing in that game that's gonna play, they're gonna take it as a regular game, but. They go execute as if we playing somebody else, like like a comp, like a comp team. Yeah. All right, I feel you. And the last question is, like, who do you feel is gonna pop off that game on the Tep team? Like, who you feel is gonna pop off? Uh, my young boy Reen. Uh, my my young boy Ben. My man Joe. Uh, Ja, DJ, Kenny. There's a lot of people I can name, but. Just, just stay tuned. Just stay tuned. That's all I got to say. All right, y'all, that's all the questions we got today. Tap up. We winning this drone this weekend. Tap out. What's up, Tep TV? My name is Ashley Boykin, and I'm here with... Zaki. And today we're going to be talking about Imhotep versus Roman game. How do you feel about the game? Uh, I feel like we got to show up for this game. How do you feel about the post Roman made saying, like, Tep pack, all that stuff, like, just basically drawing on y'all? How y'all feel about that? We just got to stand on it. That's all. Let's show up. So y'all feel like y'all finna put BTA? Yeah. So you don't think Roman is like a competition, even though people saying it's y'all biggest games, like even y'all coaches saying it's y'all one of y'all biggest games. Like, do you feel like they're any competition to you? Yeah, I feel like this is going to be our best game of the season. The only team that's going to give us competition. All right. Thank you for your time. And that's it. Tap out. What's up, Tap TV? My name is Ashley Boykin, and I'm here with Zion Green. And today we're going to be talking about the Imhotep versus Roman game. What do you feel like the score prediction is going to be? 28-6. You feel like you feel like Roman only going to score one touchdown? Yeah. So how do you feel about all the stuff they were saying on the net, like all they were saying about in the posts they made about y'all? I feel like we got to slide back. No way we should be letting these young boys talk to us like that. So how do you do you feel like if they like I'm not saying Roman will win, but do you feel like if they win, how do y'all basketball players gotta carry it? Do y'all gotta carry it different when y'all if y'all play them? If y'all do play them, do, like are y'all gonna put BTA? Let me know some. No, nah, we don't play them. So like if they lose, nothing we could do. All right. So who do you feel like is gonna be a problem in the game? Who do you feel like is gonna really impact the game and change the game and do something? Like what player on Imhotep team? Jawit. <laughs> what you think? What you think, Josh? What finna do? What you think he finna do? I really don't know position he played though. I'm just I don't know. Defense, defense. He he be sacking people. Uh, I don't know what that do. <laughs> but all I know is <laughs> all I know is he just got a win, bro. That's up. All right. I'm Matthew Smith. I'm here with Michael Davis Jr. So I see that you play football. First, how did you get into football? Oh, my brother, actually. I was a little kid. I started playing football when I was four years old. And I used to watch my brother play football at West Catholic, so I just loved that ever since. What little league team did you play for? Uh, I played for a lot of teams, but uh, most memorable team, probably the Northwest Raiders and the North Philly Aztecs. Mm. Also, what position do you play? And play. why did you pick this position? I played quarterback. Um, I came in as a freshman playing quarterback at DB. And 
I just learned the playbook so well, so I just I just stuck stuck with it. Mm. So if you could go back, would you go back and play DB? No, I'm doing good where I'm at right now. Mm. So I seen that you had you had a public league championship against MLK. Play mm -hmm. QB. How do you think you did? I think I did good. You know, uh, what seventy percent completion percentage, uh, like one fifty in the air, one touchdown. You know. Mm. Sounds really good. Um, I see the truck playing Roman Catholic next. How do you feel about playing them, the challenge? See, they're a good team right now. you also a good team. How do you feel about this? A lot of pressure on you, it seems like, because you're QB. Right. Um, I feel good. You know, I trust my guys. You know, trust the training I've been given by my coaches. Uh, preparation is key. And I know we prepare real well for a good team like Roman. Um, I just, I just, I'm just really excited for the game, you know. Every uh, blood rushing. So, I feel like we're we going to come out on top. I believe in us. Mm. Believe in y'all too. Also, if always have to always have like a plan B. Say hypothetically you go to college, I know that you're going to Army West Point. Football doesn't work out, what would be your plan B? Uh uh going in the army, I think I want to major in something in the business field or STEM field because you know as hair at Ammo Type Charter, I'm also a lead STEM ambassador. So I feel I feel like I could take STEM uh far and also somewhere in the business uh business field. And also, I want to know, what made you choose Army West Point? There's a lot of colleges out there. I know a lot of colleges looking at you. What made you choose them out of all people? Um, I chose Army West Point because it's just the opportunity after college. You know, some people go to college and they aren't, uh, they're not uh, blessed enough to go to the NFL, but they're also blessed enough to play college football. So um, I was talking to Army coaches, and they told me that there's so much more beyond than football. So Army is um, building a $2, two billion dollar agriculture facility and they just told me all the things about that and stuff and the things the connects I will have when I graduate the jobs I can get um as soon as I graduate I'll be making six figures a year so that's just that's that's something a young kid can always ask for just get, as soon as graduating college and just making that, that much money without putting your body on the line it's, it's, it's great that's crazy that you making that just doing a couple years of college and stuff like that also since you brought up STEM what's STEM like, what's the um, group are you a part of? Uh, I'm a lead engineer. I'm a lead. I'm a lead STEM ambassador in the engineering group, engineering team, basically. And also, what made you get into STEM? Uh, Sis Shirley Posey. She brought me in when I was a freshman, and everything she taught me, I just it just stuck with me, and I just loved it ever since. I loved STEM, STEM building things. You know, uh, even going to Ghana, bringing kids clean water, and um, like showing them that is, is like bringing water to a community is also like bringing life to them. So it's just mind changing, eye opening, and just, just don't take things for granted. Also, I just would like to know, like how can you incorporate STEM and football? Like how can you put those two together? Um, it's very, it's very, it's just time, it's all time management. You know, yeah, you're, you're a student from seven in the morning to 3 p.m. And then from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m you're a you're a, a athlete so you know you just know you got to know when to turn the switch on and off you know time management like you have to yes you have time for this but you also have to put time in for that like it's all you just you have to be dedicated you can't just oh, i'm going to be a football player this day and a stem stem ambassador that day no you just all all in one you just gotta be locked in so how difficult is that for you to like manage stem and football like say hypothetically if you have football practice and it's a really big day like so I see that y'all playing Roman. Hypothetically, if it's an offensive day, y'all have to go over Roman stuff, but you have a STEM meeting at the same time. How would you manage that? And how like would you prepare for that? Um, if I have a STEM meeting, I will ask, I will probably move it up during before practice or maybe right after school, because practice, uh, pre-practice at 3.35, I'm a senior, so I got out at 2.40. Maybe make the meeting around like three o'clock in Sister Shirley's office or something around that time. And then if not, if not being able to, I'll have somebody take notes and send it to me while I'm at practice. And after practice, I'll know what went down in me. Mm. Really cool how you were able to manage everything and still have time for other things. But I would like to say thank you for the interview and thank good you. luck with your game on Friday right, or Saturday. You. Thanks for having me. Yo, it's John Tucker with Tep TV, and I'm here with Makai White. All right. And the question of the day is, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Yes. All right. Since you celebrate Thanksgiving, what you going to be doing? Chilling with the family. Chilling with the family. Okay, I feel that. It's going to be at your crib or somebody else's crib? My crib. Okay, okay, okay. 
So, since you celebrate Thanksgiving and all that, what's your favorite dish? Macaroni and cheese, collard, collard greens. Oh, 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 collard greens. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, what's your least favorite dish for Thanksgiving? I don't like stuffing. You don't like stuffing? Me neither, bro. Me neither. Um, and what would you say is the most overrated dish for Thanksgiving? Turkey. Turkey. Why you say thir- Why you say turkey? It's just dry, you know. It's dry. Yeah. 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 I feel that. Yeah. You feel that? Yeah. 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 All right. Yo, it's John Tucker, and we here what? Ibrahim C C. You can spell that for me, bro. I B R A H I M C I S S E. All right, all right. And the question of the day is: Do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. All right. You think you're gonna be doing anything? Yeah. Yeah, you going? Go you said what? My mom go cook. Okay, I feel that. I feel that. So, since you be you're gonna be celebrating Thanksgiving and all that, what you think is your favorite dish? The mac and cheese and the yams. Mac and cheese. I feel that. What? You saying the yams? Yeah. So a couple people said. Yams is like overrated. How you feel about that? Yams not overrated, but I just feel like it need to be loved way more than it is. Okay, okay, okay. You gotta, you gotta look at it, how it, how, like how it tastes and all that. Like, you mean? It's good. Right, right, right. And then it depends on who cooking it. You feel me? Yeah, it depends on who cooking it. Right, right, right. All right. So what you think is the most underrated dish or overrated? It don't matter which one. Stuffing. Stuffing. You don't like stuffing? Everybody, like, a lot of people say they don't like I like it personally, but, like, a lot of people. Oh, you're saying it's underrated? Yeah, it's underrated. Okay. I think stuffing, personally, is overrated. I don't like stuffing. Oh, right. I'm where? It's underrated. I feel like it's underrated. I'm where? Huh? I'm where because I don't like stuffing? Yeah, you were. All right, y'all. That's it. Yo, it's John Tucker, and we hear what? Sanaya. Naya. How you spell that? N-I-Y-A. Okay. Yeah. How you spell that? C-Y-N-I-Y-A-H. All right, and the question of the day is, do y'all celebrate Thanksgiving? No. No, I eat every day. What that mean? I can't celebrate Thanksgiving. Why? I'm Muslim. Oh, all right, all right, I feel that. All right, so since y'all don't celebrate Thanksgiving, what's your favorite foods? Everything. <laughs> Alfredo. Alfredo? Yes. I feel that. What's your favorite food? Same with her. Alfredo. You lying? I'm not lying. Salmon? So you like seafood? Yeah. You like seafood? I don't eat seafood like that. Okay, okay. All right, so since y'all both like seafood, right, what y'all think is the most overrated seafood dish? I don't really know. I would say what you think? Overrated? Yeah. Nothing. The most non-overrated is crawfish. 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 You don't like, do you like it or don't yeah, like it? I do like it. It's delicious, but a lot of people don't like it. So it's underrated? Yeah. All right, all right. What you think? I agree with her because I never tried it anyways. I want I want to try it, but I don't know how to eat it though. Yeah. 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 I feel that vibe. All right, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it was John Tucker with Tap TV, and we hear what? Khadija. All right. And the question of the day is: Do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. So, since you celebrate Thanksgiving, who are you gonna be like celebrating it with? My family. Yeah. I feel that vibe. So, since you celebrate Thanksgiving and all that, what's your favorite dish? Um. Hurry up, yo. Can you wait? I gotta think. So probably mac and cheese. That's probably my favorite dish. Okay, that's what I. That's what I asked you. Yeah, it's mac and. But uh, all right, yeah, whatever. Uh, what is your least favorite dish? Yams. It's nasty. Are you Are you serious? Yes. It's nasty. Very nasty. Okay. 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 So she said yams is the least favorite. I'm not I'm not messing with that vibe. I don't feel that vibe at all. But um what do you think is the most overrated dish? Turkey. Turkey? Why turkey? Cause turkey just So 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 my question is all right, all right, all right. Okay, no, I don't care. My question is, since you say turkey and yams is like the bottom of the barrel, who is cooking for you? First of all, let me snatch the mic. He's trying to sit up here and make it seem like the people I be with don't know how to cook. But they know how to cook. It's just, it be nasty turkey. Nasty. First of all, this is, this is, whoa, whoa. This is my interview, okay? All right. But the interview is over since you want to get all hype. All right, y'all. Bye. Yo, it's John with Tap TV. And we hear what? Zariah. How you spell that? 
Z A H or I Y A H. All right, and the question of the day is: Do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Yeah. 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 All right. So since you celebrate Thanksgiving, where are you gonna be celebrating today? Like, you think you're gonna be doing something? I'm gonna be at everybody's house. Everybody? Mm-hmm. That's bad. It's not bad. So what if somebody poison your food? Like, what you gonna do? I watch what I eat because I don't eat everybody's food. You just said you're going to be at everybody's house, though. Did I say I was going to be eating food? Yeah. No, I didn't. All right, my fault. All right, so what's your favorite dish for Thanksgiving? Baked macaroni and yams. All right, I feel that, I feel that, I feel that. All right, and what's your least favorite food for Thanksgiving? Ham. Ham. Ham? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You tripping? I'm not tripping. You on some word? I guess then. All right, what you think the most overrated food is other than ham? Mm. Baked macaroni and yams. What you talking about? I thought you said you liked it, though. That's my favorite, but that's the overrated. Oh, you saying it's overrated, but you like it? Okay, I feel that. All right, y'all. Hello, my name is Kamara Jones, and today I'm here with... Coach Kev. Okay, Coach Kev, how was your weekend? My weekend was fantastic. I had an amazing weekend. I want to tell y'all how my weekend was, but I'll let you do your interview. Okay, from a scale of 1 through 10, how good was your weekend? On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say my weekend was probably 11. It's 11. What made it 11? Well, first, let's start with Saturday. What was your favorite thing? My favorite thing Saturday was Emotet 1. Okay. Right. My second thing was I spent time with my grandson and my granddaughter. Okay. Right. And the third thing, the Cowboys won. What could be better than that? Did he just say the Cowboys? Oh, you know I did. Let me see. Let me tell you. So this weekend, after the after the Dallas Cowboys won, I sat back and I was gonna cook dinner. I said, you know what? I don't need dinner. I'm gonna eat leftovers. But before that, I had my grandson. You know, young boy, eight months. Had a good time with him. But we had a great time. But on Saturday. You know, Emotet Panthers won, won the Public League Championship 13 in a row, but we're not going to talk about that. And uh, just a quick sentiment, bit, this weekend is going to be even better because this Saturday, 12 o'clock, Northeast Field, Emotet versus Roman, City Championship. Let's get busy. Be there. I'm still stuck on you said the Cowboys. So, how was your weekend? My weekend was good. You had a good weekend. What did you do this weekend? I spent time with my siblings, spent time with my dad. And I went home, and I finished my vanity. Oh, that's good. It's always good to have quality time with family. That's a great thing, especially on weekends when you have a long week of school. But other than that, did you just chill on Sunday? Pretty much, and I got myself together for school. That's good. And you look like you're together for school. That's a, I'm glad you had an amazing weekend, which means you're going to have an even better week. But as for now, this interview concludes, and I just want to say thank you all for tuning in to TEP TV. Tep have a TV great day. Out. Hello, Tep TV. My name is Cardinal Henderson. I'm here with Tommy Shields and Kyer Hood. So, guys, how do you think uh, the music industry, like rap, has affected this generation? Um, I think like it affected it poorly. Like most of the rap that's getting produced now is like towards gun violence and killing people and like talking about people, dead relatives and stuff. And I feel like it affects people in a bad way because like. You won't want nobody to talk about your family dead or alive. So it's like, it put a mindset to where people like, now I gotta handle the situation because I feel as though you disrespecting my people. And I feel like it's just creating more conflicts and throughout our generation and just the world in general. Like all over the world is rap music that's getting produced and it shouldn't be produced the way it is. Like showing like guns and just producing, producing violence and stuff was just corny because it's like the killing rates and homicides and all that going up in numbers and it's just like it's just a bad image and it's just not the same no more okay here um yeah she pretty much said it like i don't really have nothing to say people gonna be people and then at the end of the day like she said like it's just bad overall so far as like when it comes to dissing people family members dead or alive but it's like that's just that's just what they come from, honestly. And that's what they make their money off, so they're going to continue to do it. Can't nobody stop them. 
What do you think the hottest rapper in Philly is? Um, in my opinion, I don't have like no hottest rapper in Philly. I feel like there are a lot of rappers talk about the same stuff, just a different in their own little way. But I feel like it's like the same category, the same production and stuff like that. So I don't really have a favorite Philly rapper. Um, I don't know. Um, it ain't really like Philly was on a like on a rise a little bit, but like. I feel like the only one that's still like pushing and like going through with it is like Kwani right now. Cause you see like he's starting to, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. Not just Kwani. Cause Kwani, he getting big features, but also she, she, TS, he getting um, big features right now too. So they both doing their thing right now. How did it affect the fashion industry? Um. Oh, fashion industry wise, like I feel like, I feel like some, some came good with it, some bad, because you got people like, uh, let's say like G Herbo, for instance, like he know how to, he know how to dress in some you ain't seen before, but it's like it still look like calm, and like then you got people like Uzi and stuff like that. They'll like dress oh, like some some oh, of their fits be hard, yeah. Some of their fits be hard, but then some of it just be like. Like you know the over baggy look yeah. and stuff like that. Like some everybody don't look like rock with that. So um, it, it it come with good or bad. Um, I think it depends on it depends because right now in Philly it's like it's kind of like a it's not bad but it's like it feel like everybody wearing what everybody wearing. Like it's just like you see somebody and you just be like. Y'all all got the same thing going. Y'all all got the same all the taste. Lulu, yeah, and and also, like, that's, that's another thing with, like, with on, Philly. Like, that's another thing with, like, with Philly. Like, it's just like everybody, like, they they get tired of everything too fast, too. So that just, like, I don't know. Everybody just start to move on from one thing to the next. So it ain't like everybody, ah, don't be stuck on something for that long. They be trying to hurry up and find a new topic because they don't want to seem like they just following a trend. And I mean, like to be honest, everybody, it's just clothes. You get it, you get what you get. Who do y'all, who do y'all think is a good influence in rapping? Good influence, um, um I think. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't know. know. It depends. So, for instance, like I feel as though an uh, upcoming guest level. Like, well, for instance, in my opinion. I like Rod Wave. That's just me though, yeah. because I feel as though he's lyrical and he know how to like put his feelings into a yeah, song and he, just speak how he feel and like yeah, give everybody feel his pain. the opportunity to like let their feelings out through a song. It's like a lot of people think that like men so stubborn and don't know how to communicate and like a lot of men don't like talking about their feelings, but I just feel like with him it's like he put that and he just write it down and then he just put it with a song and it's just like thing is like you really gotta listen because it's like he actually telling you his story and his emotions through a song and a lot of the people cannot do that a lot yeah, of people don't even have that's that. just how like everything he say that's probably how most of the men feel and they just won't say it because it's like you know like yeah, in everyday yeah, life yeah. especially being from philly like you know who you got around you like they turn around throw everything back in your face and stuff like that not um, even just that i feel like not even just men feel like that some women can can relate to it too. It's just like a lot of people don't know how to use their voice, like to talk or like to do anything. A lot of people don't understand that you can use your voice. There's nothing wrong with that. So like him doing that is like a little leeway of people getting comfortable and using his music and his songs to relate to a lot of things. Yeah. And he on tour right now. They said his tour was good, but I didn't go. Carnell went. Did you have a good experience? Yeah, John was jumping out the. Hey, bro, he sell, he sold out the Wells Fargo Center, bro. That's really hard to do. He sold out the Wells Fargo Center. And the last question: How has technology improved the music now versus before? I think technology play a big part because at the end of the day, it's a lot of social media, like Instagram and all that. It plays a big play into a lot of things, not even just the rap and just music, just in general, like your life. Like a lot of people think it's okay to like put everything they do and they hold life on social media, but it's like you could get bashed, you could get shamed, you could get a lot of stuff 
because you put every, all your business and stuff like that on uh, like social media and you got a lot of access to a lot of things now that the technology is so advanced and stuff. It could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, but I just feel like certain situations, technology is really the reason why a lot of stuff get found out and bored about and like shamed or bashed oh, and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff happened. That's what they just started with CDs for real, for real. Like now that the phone's out and all that, all you gotta do is just put in, you know, they made headphones and stuff like that long time ago, but now you put in your headphones, like connect them to your Apple Watch, your phone, computer, and all that. So technology play a big part. I just feel like um, a lot of things can be differently and improved, but it's like, it takes for a village to improve and change things, not just one person. So I feel like, like, you can, you might can clean up or change or do something, but it's like that one person can't change everything like you need people beside you to make stuff happen and make stuff work and change and that's going to wrap up the show today guys thank you tap tv Oh, oh wait, 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 I got not, uh, let me do jokes, let me do jokes, let me do, all right, we, it's a, no, I want you, all right, so look, we, uh, we looking for people, we scouting, we in the hallway looking for people to interview, feel me, feel me, uh, yeah, yeah. what you, what you, what you got to say, Ant? Man, life good. Life good? Life good. So, like, is it a certain food that make your ear so big, or, like, what is it? Uh, ah, nah. Nah, okay. All right, let's go. What's up? I'm here with Tep TV. My name is Kyle Carter. I'm here with Samad. Who? Samad. All right. So like Thanksgiving coming up. What's your favorite? What's your favorite meal? Favorite? Meal. No, no. What's your favorite dish? All right. Boom. Right. You guy had a you guy had a mac and cheese with the yams on the side. Right. With the collard greens and everything. But you got to mix the mac and cheese and the yams together. That's the great combo right there. That's the great combo. Yeah, Debbie Mutt, Debbie Mutt, Debbie Mutt. All right, look. That's a great combo. Okay, so like, did you ever have a bad Thanksgiving, like where the food was just nasty? Oh, yeah. It was like one of my aunt houses. They had they had yams that came out of a can. Mac and cheese was trash. It was just everything. Yeah, we got to leave on that note. <laughs> my name is Kyle Carter. I'm here with Tep TV. Who am I here with? Ibn. Who? Ibn. One more? Ibn. All right, so like Thanksgiving coming up. Like what's your what's your favorite meal, bro? What's your favorite what's your favorite thing to eat? Let him know. Listen, you already know like the fried chicken meat, collard greens. I don't really like the turkey meal. You know I do the turkey ham though. You feel me? Maybe all right. So like, feel me. What about the mac and cheese? Mac and cheese. You already know. Baked right in the oven. You already know. But do a certain person have to make it or like it don't matter? No, my mom. Made. My mom got. My mom got to make it. All right. All right. We out. We out. I'm here with Mr. Tet TV. I'm like, nah. All right, who I'm here with? Mr. Conley. Okay, so like, Thanksgiving. What What is your favorite like dish you have to have on Thanksgiving? Um, I gotta have mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. turkey, peas, all that good stuff. Like what about that. What about the potato salad? Um, uh, not the biggest fan of potato salad. Okay, okay. So what's your least favorite? What's your least? Favorite? I never asked nobody. What's your least favorite? A least favorite. Yeah. Um, probably stuffing. Stuffing, yeah, I, I don't like stuffing. That's a good job, but I don't like stuffing. Hold on, let's show them our deck. Yeah. All right, we go. I'm here with Jamir. All right, so Thanksgiving, for me, everybody like to eat. What's your favorite must got? You must have it on your plate. Like, what's your favorite? Yams, bro. Yams? Yams. All right, yeah, like, yams and turkey ham. Yeah, yeah, turkey ham. ham. Tastes like syrup? Yeah. Who be cooking it? My mom. She be doing a good job? Yeah. All right, I could, I could, I could come see what it tastes like? No. I can't? All right, I can get it. Oh, no, I got you, bro. You want me <laughs> Are we out? Um, with Tef TV, who am I here with? Chelsea. Okay, Chelsea. So what is, like, your favorite your favorite dish you got to have on Thanksgiving? Um, So I'm Jamaican, so Thanksgiving is always different for me because my food is cultural. Okay. But um, I be eating oxtail. Um, a real bad, man. Okay, okay, finish. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, oxtail, um, yeah. I got rice, Yeah, stuff like that, rice and peas, um, pepper shrimp. Yeah, all that. Okay, so like, uh, uh, can I, uh, can I come over to your house for Thanksgiving? I really want to try some jerk chicken and curry goat. No. 
All right. Okay, we done with the interview. My name is Kyle Carter. Who I'm here with? Lear. Who? Lear. All right. You know Thanksgiving coming up. What's your favorite? What's your favorite dish? Dish? Yeah. Like, what's your favorite? Like, you gotta have it on Thanksgiving. Macaroni and yams. I don't really like yams. Everybody say yams. What's wrong with yams? No, it I is. eat them like every occasion. Right, macaroni. Mac, oh, right. So, like, who made the best macaroni and cheese in your family? My mom. Cat, we out. No, she. I'm here with royalty. Royalty, I be the queen. Then they wake up, they get it. All right, my fault, my fault, my fault. All right, so like, Thanksgiving coming up. What's your favorite dish? Macaroni. Macaroni. Come on, you. You could be a little more. Uh, macaroni. Macaroni. Macaroni and what? Cheese. Mm, who be making it? My mom. I gotta come see what that tastes like. No. You a hater. All right, but besides macaroni and cheese, what's your well, what's your least favorite? Cranberry sauce. Yeah, that's yeah. I hope a, you don't like it. Are yeah, you making that face because you like it or like what? They serve that in your house. Not in my house. Other people's house. <laughs> All right, but are you are you are you like are you are you dining are you dashing and dining or are you dining and dashing or like or are you just going to do it at your house today or are you going to go at other. Feel me, cause sometimes on Thanksgiving I like to go to my mom's house, my dad house. Well, like, feel me, different parts. Feel me, just to, so you going, you staying going where? My house. All right, thank you for interview. Thank you for uh, interviewing Willa Kai Carter. And that brings us to the end of the show. We hope that you enjoy watching as much as we enjoy creating it for you, and we hope to see you again real soon. Tap up, go, go tap. Tap. Tap is off.